Hello, good to see you, Pastor Sam. And I have three Hi. special guests here. Polly, Julia, and her duder is the third special guest. So um, two and a half special guests. But anyway, that's not why, or maybe that is exactly why you're here. Um, today I want to talk about a reflection on taking a walk. And now my last few reflections have been God's design for the family. And I said that was a positive thing, not in the sense that it's an uplifting thing, although I hope it was an uplifting thing. But in the sense of, I, I want to kind of balance these reflections and have some of them be, here's, here's a bad thing, avoid this thing. And some of them be, here's a good thing, do this thing. I think we tend to hear a lot of, this is a bad thing, don't do this thing. And so you're like, all right, I can't do all these things, but like, what do I do? What, what then do I do? How then shall we live? There we go, that sounds much more uh, whatever. Anyway, so I want to also do some positive things. Here's things you can do. With uh, God's design for the family, it was here's how we interact with each other, both both our immediate family, but then really everything. Right? I made the point a few times that the family is the basis for everything. And so now, here, here's, the, here's the bridge a family activity, taking a walk. You can do this all by yourself. Is not the point. I was just trying to form a connection in my little brain, so I did. But taking a walk. I want to talk about just taking a walk. I'm going to mention it at the end. It's good for you. I don't care about that. Um, I would probably recommend it unless it were objectively bad for you. Taking a walk, even if it were neutral, if there were no health benefits whatsoever, right? Taking a walk. And the reason I want to recommend that you go for a walk is for two reasons. The first one is seeing God's creation and appreciating God's creation. And then the second one is being in the midst of your community, wherever that may be. So first of all, kind of a general disclaimer before I get into this. Um, doubtless there are people who can't take a walk, who shouldn't take a walk, perhaps in their community. Um, so, all those normal things, right? If you can't walk, uh, you can still try to do some of these things. Call folks on the phone and be part of the community that way. Um, look, look out the window, right? If you can go to the front porch, sit on your front porch or your back porch or, or wherever. Or turn on the TV and go to the Nature Channel and uh, see God's creation, right? There's ways to be doing these things that aren't taking away. If you, if you absolutely can't take a walk. But hopefully that is the minority of people and hopefully that's the minority of you because I really want to encourage all of you to go outside. My window is over there. That's why I'm pointing right over there. That's the outside for me, is to go outside and take a walk. The first benefit of taking a walk is, I've got my little sheet here, is seeing God's creation. What I want you to do and um, we do this with our high school kids. Every so often, we'll send them on kind of a, a scavenger hunt, so to speak, where they're looking for different colors. We'll go into our sanctuary at Faith, and they have to pick a window, one of the stained glass windows, and then they have to find natural objects that match all of the colors in the window. And it's actually really cool, some of the pictures that they come back with, flowers, or trees or you know lots of different things natural objects not cars or buildings or uh, signs or any of that stuff I won't be too derisive stuff but natural things the what I want you, and and so go for a walk notice the breadth of God's creation there's not only one type of flower heck there's not even ten types of flowers there's probably not even a hundred or a thousand types of flowers. I'm sure there are like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of different types of flowers. There's a lot of, and that's just flowers. It's not bushes or plants or trees or animals. Or, there's so much stuff. The world is just absolutely jam-packed with stuff that God has made. Go outside and look at the stuff. Look at all of the different stuff that God has made. And while you're looking at this stuff, 
you'll see the hidden beauty that God has put into creation. You know, some people might think that this is just, uh, what's that, the watchmaker analogy, right? Some, some gaudy thing made this and stepped back, and it's just a machine running on a program, or it's a computer program running itself. No, God has, he's, he's put beauty into the designs that he has made. Count the number of petals on a flower. Notice how many of them have five petals. That's not a random thing. That's, that's, that's an intentional thing. There's beauty to it. Look at the symmetry of a maple leaf, how, how perfectly symmetrical it is from one side to the other, and, and the, the point symmetry within the three nodes on the leaves. Hopefully that's a maple leaf, otherwise I'll look like an idiot. Um, might be an oak leaf, now that I come to think about it. Either way, look at both of them. Notice the differences between them. Notice things in the different seasons and stages of life. I'm recording this at, well, I'm recording it at the beginning of June. Um, it's coming out in the middle of June, so hopefully things are still reasonably green. Here in South Dakota, they don't stay green long. So at least when I'm recording this, grass is green, trees are green. Oh, the hills are beautiful. They're, that's that hidden beauty that I'm talking about. You can drive to work or to school or back home or whatever and just be super focused. And I tend to do this too. Be super focused on what you're doing and you just shut out all of creation. Go for a walk. That's the right time to just let your head be free. Stop. Don't take your phone with you. God forbid you take it. Seriously, don't take your phone. Oh my goodness. Nothing would ruin a walk more. And taking your phone with you. Um, be, be in the creation that God has made. Be looking around and noticing all, all of the different stuff that God has made and still takes care of. He takes care of all those flowers out there who exist to be pretty. I mean, I'm sure they have some function too, but golly, they sure do look good. And, and, and the last part of it is enjoying where you are. Hold on, I need to referee my kids. <sighs> we got a new thing, so of course, there's argument about the new thing. Anyway, <clears throat> being where you are, enjoying where you are. Enjoy the place where God has put you. There are things <clears throat> here in Pierre and in South Dakota that other places of the country don't have. And I'm just going to say that and wave my hands, because I'm sure that tr that's true, even though I don't know exactly what those things are. But I will see things here that I can't see when I go back to my home state. There are things that I see there that I don't see here. Right? There are particularities of creation to the area where you are. And so you can notice all of these things. And now, it's sort of implicit in this, I'll, I'll say it explicitly, is thanking our Creator, recognizing all of the stuff that He's made, and thanking him for it. Uh, understanding, and this is faith affirming, this is faith strengthening stuff. The God who made not just one type of flower or ten types of flowers, I don't even know all of the different flowers. That God who thought it would be a good idea to make tons of different flowers is the same God who takes care of you, who makes all of the different yous that there are. There's only one me which is fortunate. But all of the different people, all of the different animals and plants and things, that God who made this super complicated world knows exactly how to make it run. The God who makes all of the seasons go and the things live and thrive and then die back in winter, that God is watching out for you. That's a very comforting message. As you walk through God's creation, I hope that's the conclusion that you arrive at. I hope that's not all you do, but I hope you also arrive at that conclusion. Wow, God made a lot of really cool, interesting, diverse, very intricate stuff. He is a really powerful God. I got a referee again. Okay, Whew. I'm gonna make it, I think. The second benefit 
of going for a walk, beyond experiencing God's creation, is being part of your community. Now again, the usual caveats apply. Um, some, of, some of you are very outgoing, sociable folks. Some of you are less outgoing, less sociable folks, and that's absolutely fine. I, I tend to rank on the less outgoing, less sociable end of the spectrum, so I empathize with you people in what I'm about to say. As you walk along, there will probably be other people walking with you or near you or whatever word you want to use. Greet those people. You can talk to them if you want to, and, and doubtless some of you will talk to them. You probably know some of them. Even if you just hit them with a wave or a smile or a howdy, you're still acknowledging their presence. You're, you're acknowledging that they are there and you're greeting them. Um, you're, you're being part of this community. And again, this, this reflection didn't arise because of our uh, high schoolers, but this is something that we tell our high schoolers. As you go through the hallways, smile at another kid, wave to another kid, tell them hi. You might be the only person to say hello to that person all day. Seriously, our students might be the only person that says hello to that particular student all day long. They're thinking that they could drop off the edge of the earth and nobody would know. And they're probably, sadly, mostly true. As you're going through your neighborhood, you can acknowledge other people's presence. You can acknowledge that they are there, that you're not isolated tunnel vision in this place, but that you are with them in this community. Now, you don't have to talk to them. If they stop to talk, you can maybe talk about the weather. I'm sure you can find something to complain or compliment or, I don't know, I don't know. Small talk, da da da, small talk. See, I'm bad at small talk. Or just wave to them, right? Hi, it's okay, it's fine. You, you be as sociable and as outgoing as you are. And may, maybe venture out of your comfort zone occasionally. I know it's scary. You'll be, you'll be okay. <laughs> I venture out of my comfort zone a little bit more than I like. Um, either way, greet the people who are walking with you because it helps you to gain some familiarity. I've been walking to and from church uh, basically since I got here. Not exclusively. I drive my car in the winter. I'm not crazy. But I've been walking now for, gosh, just about three years. And I'm really starting to know, recognize faces. Now, I don't know a lot of these people's names. right? There's Lady with that one dog that I see walking her dog early in the morning. There's the, the man with the garden who is a Marine Corps veteran. And I've stopped and talked to him about him being um, in the Marine Corps, or, or, or his was being in the Right? There's there's person who goes jogging. There's different couples that I see. Now, I, I don't know these people's names. I don't know a lot about them, but I recognize them. And I remember them. And when I see them, I greet them. I'm part of this community. This community where I am up here on my side of town. And I'm greeting the other people who are part of my community. And the third reason that I said I would talk about. It's good for you, right? Even if it weren't good for you, if it were bad for you, I would probably cautiously recommend it to you. But walking is actually good for you. Um, so go out for a walk. Go for a walk. Improve your overall health. Witness God's creation. All of the really cool things that he makes. And as you go along, wave to the other people. Flash a smile. Hit them with a hello or a howdy maybe even talk to them. My wife does plenty of that, so that's why I include it here. Some of you won't, and I appreciate that. I, I usually hit them with the old hello, um, but you can stop and talk to them too. Random people, strangers, and they won't be so strange. <laughs> well, they'll probably still be plenty strange, <laughs> uh, but they won't be strangers when you're done talking. So go out, go for a walk. That's what I want you to not only reflect upon, but to do. Your homework for today is to go for a walk. I'll see you next time. Until then, 
God's peace be with you.